Hello, this is Don Lampson with Lampson Cycle Shoes. And I'm in my stitching room here. I do all the cutting and stitching here. Um, you can see I've got some sewing machines over here. This is my workbench where I cut every, all the parts out and stuff. And underneath that bench is what I call the history box. And there's all sorts of old stuff in here. Uh, a lot of you know I've been doing this for quite a while. I, start, I actually made my first bike shoes back in 1986 and uh, been uh, working at it ever since. So I just thought we'd kind of dig through the box and show you what's in here. It's kind of interesting. Um, when I have customers come in here, which not, not that often because I'm kind of out of the way, but sometimes we, I show them this. So I, this way everyone can see it. Like right on top here, this is a, uh, a prototype again. Um, and this was when I had the, the uh, lace guides right on the edge. And you can kind of see it through there, which is why I went away from this. I just didn't like the look of it. It just doesn't look that clean. Um, there's no more. This one had, this is, I think this is when I got rid of the front seam. There used to be a seam right up the front here and the one in the back. And the one in the back I kept for quite a while and now that's gone. So that one, that's, there is one of them. Um, let's see. Okay, this is from when I was with D2, uh, D2 shoe. This was the uh, D2 2D. Um, this is when I used to reinforce the uppers with sailcloth. It worked pretty well for back then. Um, didn't adapt to the shape of the the shoe last or the foot very well, but it definitely reinforced the upper. I do that in a different way now. I'll, I'll explain that as we go, we'll go along. So that's the D2 2D. This is actually the, the very first one where the cell cloth was laminated directly to the upper instead of laminated to a, a material and then cut and stitched to the upper. Here we have an interesting one. This is the shoe pedal system for the uh, Project 96. That's the pedal in there. And that's how you get out of it. There's the pedal. It's got a, um, it's got float built into there. And when you, to get in, you just engage the front like any pedal and then click it, click in. And to get out, you just twist like I just showed you. Um, the pedal mechanism is inside underneath that plate there. There's a urethane, elastomer urethane bumper that moves the little pin that engages it in the back. Um, I, I used to call this integrated panel construction because it's all integrated like that. Nothing stitched over the top. And this, when it, this is, you have to understand, this is from 1995, uh, was it? Just before Project 96, uh, we, I did this. And um, it's a carbon shell and it's got a urethane, a ribbed urethane, uh, inside so it's all ribbed channeled out to keep it light um, and we ended up testing this at the the uh, wind tunnel with GM in Dearborn Michigan and I don't remember the exact numbers but it came out to be in basically like going from a, a spoked wheel to a good disc is like going from a, a shoe with a straps like that to this was like going from a spoked wheel to a good disc. So it was substantial. Um, Norman Alvis set the US hour record on this system. Um, I might just revive this. I've got some updated, some, you know, updated ideas how to do this. And let's see, uh, this, this is the road version of the same thing from back then. This is when I was in Rifle, Colorado. It was still called Lampson, and it was Lampson, Lampson Designs was the name of the company. And it doesn't have the aerodynamic K 
cap over it. It's just all molded right in. And again, when you there's the pedal in there. So you have your fore aft adjustment with those two slots here, and then there's slots on the internal piece that go across for your uh, lateral adjustment or Q factor. You can also adjust the range of where it floats. And again, to get in, you just step on the front and snap in, and you're in. Um, and even with that, the uh, Olympic one, the Project 96 Olympic shoe, they did a lot of standing starts with that, um, and no one ever pulled out. They were very, very solid. Uh, what's this? Okay, this one is uh, a speed plate direct mount system. I've explained that in another video. This is the old X1 cleat, and this is actually the very first. There's the sole by itself. The T-nuts sit in there so they don't spin. Um, the very first speed plate direct mount system. This was down back in uh, right around probably 1991, 92, something like that. I don't remember exactly. Um, oh, that's that's just the mate to the other road version of the integrated system. There's another Project 96 shoe. This is a prototype to a track shoe um, that I was making for Matt Diefenbach. He's a um, world champion track sprinter, masters track sprinter. Um, and he's been riding this one for a couple of years now. Um, so this was the prototype to that. So I made this in my size and I went and and uh, rode this as I always do. I ride, I rode this on my left foot and then whatever other prototype on the right foot. Uh, when I was back in Colorado, I also did just some regular shoes. Like this was just a ladies slip on shoe with a urethane, molded urethane sole. The soles, you, you know, you can buy pre-made and I got the lasts that worked with this sole. Um, it's kind of a, a cool shoe. I actually, I actually like this one. Um, I did the, the way the liner, the upper and into the liner rolls in was kind of a, that was a unique way to do that, that I came up with that I think gave a really nice clean look to this shoe. There's another version of it. This is one of my, uh, one of the few shoes that I did actually with, with actual leather. I found this at the, this stuff at the, uh, um, uh, shoe show in Leon, Mexico. And I just said, I got to come up with something to use that because it was just so cool. And they had it in like a purple colors and all that stuff too. It was kind of neat. Um, there we'll get the, we'll get the regular shoes out of the way. This was another lady's, uh, sandal that I, I did. Um, I never did actually make pairs of these. I just made this one sample and then just decided I needed to get back focused on bike shoes. And this one was uh, hand painted by a lady in, uh, in Vail. I remember her first name was Britton. I can't remember her last name. She worked at Skeo, which is a ski wear, premier ski wear uh, company in, um, in Vail, Colorado. Um, she did a great job. She's a really, really talented artist. I mean, this is this is really nice what she did here, but her fine art work is just outstanding. She's an extremely talented lady. Okay, so uh, this was the first uh, prototype of the when I moved here to to um to Arizona. This was the very first one. You can see the seam up the middle that I was talking about before. This was before I started perforating them. So there was a seam up the middle, middle in the front and in the back. Um, and uh, this sole was made without a mold. This was just made directly to the last just to, to see how everything was going to work. And it, that, that got me inspired to keep going. 
Let's see, here's another old D2 shoe. This was the first prototype to the, uh, I think this was called the Ultra. This was more like a recreational touring con kind of shoe. And again, the, this is the laminated cell cloth. It was laminated first to a, a white backing and then cut and stitched to the upper. That's another prototype for that track shoe. And this is an interesting material. This, this strap is made with um, texalium, which is actually a, an aluminum um, coated fiberglass and then woven. So it gives that really cool metallic look. Um, so I make these straps right here. And again, this is using a lot of the no stitch technology. Like you notice the Velcro is not stitched anywhere in here or here. It's all bonded together. And the same with this side, the strap, you can kind of see the shadow of it inside. And that was the very first, uh, I think the very first one I made. This is an old prototype for a mountain bike shoe. This was from, when, again, when I was in Rifle, Colorado. And I used similar cutouts now for the brand new gravel shoe. Um, this was just a prototype. It was what I was thinking about back then, but frankly, I didn't have the adhesives that would, would uh, make it work. The sole just wouldn't, you know, if, if you actually tried to ride this shoe, I don't think the sole would stay on very well. So this was an, an old one of that. That's a uh, material from a company named Sterenzier. I can't remember the name of it, but it's, a, it's a, made out of polypropylene, recycled polypropylene and waterproof. It's a really good material. This was a really early one. This was called the Donnie, D-O-N-I, and I named it that intentionally, to, just four letters, so it's real simple to remember. Um, it's got the aqua sock type material, um, heel strap with Velcro. It wasn't meant for tightening as much as for a com helping to accommodate for half sizes. Um, so I've tried to make that very clear to people so they didn't jam their toes into the front. You can see this one is so old it's coming apart. This is from like the 80s, the mid 80s. This is old. These are reflective material on the straps. One thing interesting inside here is this sole comes out. Let me get to that. And this is made like a ski, because that's my background, it's from skiing. And this is a, a triple foam core. And what I would do is first lay in the carbon composite. It was unidirectional, and I would make my own tracks, uh, you know, panels, and lay that into the base of the mold. Then I'd put the center rib of foam on there and then I would lay um, uh, how did I do that was that more no I put the fiberglass in first okay then the carbon and then the two then I then I would put the two you know put the carbon over the top the rib and oh and down into the bottom and then I would put these two outer sides of foam and then another set of the unidirectional well tracks uh, fiberglass on the top so it's a foam core triple foam core which is like the old uh, V ski or the um, Dina star made a triple foam core like this too the Omega glass I think it was called so it's very light very very resilient it was revi resilient and and very stiff and very durable but you would had a, if you had a t-nut you would just crush this material trying to tighten it up so it had a countersink hole and the screw would come from here out and then a bolt would go on the cleat rather than the other way around. So that's how that worked. And what do we have here? Another prototype to that track shoe. It takes a few prototypes to get to what you want. This is uh, the first prototype to the new Wizard, which has yet to be released, really. Um, it's, I'm still doing some final touches on that, and then it has to go through the, the uh, the uh, approval process at BOA because um, you can't just make a shoe with a BOA and just throw it out there. You've got to have it approved first, which is why um, they're known for holding up so well. And it's, you know, they're the best one. 
Um, so, oh, and this was the kind of a prototype that I was playing with too. It's a wood sole. Um, it's actually a carbon sole with a, a wood veneer over it. You can see on the edge here. This one split when I made it, so you can kind of see the carbon through there. I'm trying to, if, when I have some time here, I'm going to make a work out the process so uh, I can do this. It'd be fun to do that on a retro shoe, so it looks like a wood sole. This, this is another one of the. Uh, D2 Ultras with a Texalium sole. And this was another one of the early prototypes. Starting to figure out how to put the perforations in here. This, this is an early one with a, an Aerolite for an Aerolite pedal. Um, I really really don't do that anymore. It's just more trouble than it's worth. And one more of the Project 96. And an extra, an extra Wahoo mount for my bike computer. I was wondering where that was. <laughs> so here it is. Um, so I think that's about it for now. Uh, I just thought that would be kind of a fun little little video to check out. You can see some of the history. So uh, it's uh, actually a gorgeous day out here. I think I might have to go out and go for a bike ride. All right, so have a great day, you guys. Bye now.